Okay, I've got 5.30 on the, the clock here. So I'll convene this meeting. Holly, would you please go ahead and call the roll? President Swan. Present. Vice President Henry. Here. Director Moran. Present. Director Fulce. Here. Director Ferris. Here. All are present. Thank you, Holly. Okay, we'll go right to the agenda. Rick, you have uh, a couple of new business items. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, there's still, it looks like our, our attendees are still coming on. Uh, uh, and I'll go ahead and start. Our first item of new business is uh, Community Power is Resilient Allocation Special District Program. Uh, representative authorization, uh, uh, environmental planner, Carly Blanchard will present this item. Carly. Great, thank you, Rick. So about a week ago, we received um, a grant opportunity through Cal OES, um, which will help fund any money that we've spent for PSPS events in the past. So when PG&E shuts off the power um, for power safety events, we can use this money to purchase generators um, and fund some of our fuel and other costs. So right now we have until tomorrow to get this submitted to Cal OES. So I've been trying to get as much information into the grant proposal, uh, but we will need the board to select a representative for the district as the signatory as we have in past grants. So we have attached this resolution and we're asking the board to pass this and allow Rick to sign out all the application paperwork for us. Okay, thank you, Carly. Uh, do we have any questions uh, or comments from the board for Carly or Rick? No. Uh, Director Moran. Uh, I also see that uh, Holly had her hand up as well, but I'll, I'll go first here. And uh, Carly, do you have any idea how much did we spend on a daily basis for fuel? If, if that's what we're going to get, just ballpark number? Right. So that would be a better question for James. But unfortunately, the grant period is only from July 1st of 2020 until October 31st of 2021. So right now we haven't spent any money on fuel except for this newest event, which we haven't actually estimated those costs. So what we focused on for this grant are the bigger costs, which were those generators that we purchased. Um, so that's going to pretty much use up all of the funds that we can apply for. Right now the grant's for a total of $300,000. And by just using those grants that we've purchased, I mean, sorry, the generators that we've purchased, we're pretty much going to meet that $300,000. Okay, great. Thank you. So would we get this $300,000 to, even though we've already purchased the generators, or is it for additional purchasing of new generators or materials? Right. So two of the larger purchase generators do fall within that period, and then we're planning to purchase one additional mobile generator. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Uh, Holly? Yes, um, I just wanted to note on the resolution, the date is incorrect in the packet. And uh, so I wanted you to know that the date has now been changed to October 29th of 2024 on the resolution. Okay, thank you, Holly. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from any of the uh, participants or attendees? None, okay. Uh, okay, so I guess I'll go ahead and make the motion that we adopt resolution 520-21, appointing uh, Rick as our point of contact with uh, Cal OES. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Lou. Okay, Holly, would you like to record the vote? President Swan. Yes. Vice President Henry. Yes. Director Moran. Yes. Director Fulz. Yes. Director Ferris. 
Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Holly. Okay, Rick, back to you for item B. Uh, item uh, 2B is the landslide and debris flow hazard condition uh, threatening the San Lorenzo Valley caused by the CZU wildfire. Um, uh, we did discuss this at the last board meeting, and if we have additional information, I recommended that the board review this memo and provide comments in regards to the landslide and debris flow hazard conditions uh, in the Harmon Creek watershed. Uh, the CZU lightning complex wildfire started as a series of lightning fires on August 16, 2020, across the western Santa Cruz and San Mateo counties. Uh, the fire was active for more than a month and burned uh, approximately 86,500 acres with 1,450 structures destroyed and one fatality. Uh, this includes approximately 1,600 acres of watershed land owned by the district that supplies about half of the district's water supply uh, in the San Lorenzo Valley. Large areas of the watershed land were burned by the fire, resulting in the possibilities of landslide and debris flow hazard conditions during the upcoming rainy season. The district has been working uh, with the help of uh, emergency contractors to mitigate uh, hazards, including identification and removal of fire damaged trees, closing hazards on district property. The district has also been coordinating with numerous other agencies engaged uh, in post-disaster emergency efforts within the San Lorenzo Valley. Such agencies include the County of Santa Cruz, Cal Fire, Cal OES, uh, the California Department of Conservation, FEMA, the U.S. Department of Agricultural uh, and the Natural Resource uh, Conservation Service, among others. Two of these agencies, Cal Fire and the California Department of Conservation, recently released a report entitled Watershed Emergency Response Team Evaluation, um, the CZU Lightning Complex. A copy of the work report is available uh, and there's a link in this memo and you can, uh, we do link to it off the district's website. October 21st, 2020, the district board of directors reviewed a memo from the district manager outlining the work report and discussed conditions outlined in the Harmon Creek watershed. The work report further states that on page 40, based on our limited field uh, reconnaissance, a uh, properly designed and located deflection structure may reduce the potential for avulsion from uh, the current channel on an unnamed water course immediately upslope of the Boulder Creek Elementary School and adjoining residential neighborhoods. And, and we refer to that as the district's Harmon Creek um, stream. Uh, the actual debris flows pathways are highly uncertain and were difficult to predict during the rapid evaluation. Deflection structures may prove effective in reducing the chance for avulsion in other areas where the potential for post-fire debris flow and flowing impacts and flooding impacts were observed. For these reasons, the report recommended further observation and determinations uh, be made by a state certified professional geologist and professional engineers. The district continues to be engaged in ongoing discussion with county representatives with direct post-fire knowledge of the Harmon Creek watershed in the work report. The district believes the county could help facilitate a, a design for a deflection structure given the familiarity with the watershed and its technical resources such as professional geologists, engineers, and importantly, the county's ability to reach out to state and federal agencies with emergency construction facilities those of the district on its own. The board directed staff to continue pursuing county and state assistance, uh, considering mitigation measures for Harmon Creek and report back to the board. On October 28, 2020, Santa Cruz County 5th District Supervisor, Chris McPherson facilitated a meeting uh, specifically to address recommendations in the work report. Um, attending this meeting uh, were the authors of the work report, several members from Cal uh, OES, uh, Department of Conservation, Cal Fire, County Flood Control, County Public Works Director, representatives of the district, there was a total of 19 participants. Uh, Bruce McPherson's office uh, released a summary of the meeting, and uh, it's uh, the summary goes that the purpose of the meeting was to discuss the San Lorenzo Valley Water District questions regarding the work report relative to mitigation debris, mitigating debris flows, specifically in Harmon Creek. As described by various state representatives on the call, the purpose of the work report was to provide data and a rapid assessment of conditions after the CZU lightning incident and not meant to be interpreted as a comprehensive list of recommendations. 
support report focused on life safety and provided data to the local community to use, analyze, and develop their own local emergency response plans and projects. It was affirmed that public and private property owners are responsible for debris flow mitigation on their property and whether or not to do mitigation. Relative to Harmon Creek, there was a consensus among meeting attendants that it could be useful for the district to clean up choke spots identified in the work report, which may help with small or medium sized debris flows. There was further discussion or consensus that mitigation measures would not protect property and life uh, safely in the event of a major storm. So educating the community regarding the urgency to evaluate uh, or uh, to evacuate when notified would continue to be very important. Lastly, it was affirmed that the use of K-Rail uh, was not advisable as they could become projectiles during a major debris flow event. Uh, district representatives expressed a desire to, to uh, do the basic uh, choke spot cleanup uh, as was specifically identified in the meeting and preferred to do so with proper permits. To that end, it was agreed that Rick Rogers would receive contract information or contact information as follows. Uh, the Cal OES to contract to uh, they get permits for the Clean Water Act, Fish and Wildlife Regulations. Uh, County Public Works was going to supply information for the process to inform Fish and Wildlife about completing an emergency project. Other uh, follow-up discussed in addition to the major communications uh, program the county is coordinating to inform the community uh, regarding debris flows and evacuation plans. The McPherson office would reach out to the Boulder Creek Elementary School, the Boulder Creek Cemetery, and the Boulder Creek Business Association below Harmon Gulch. Moving forward, a unified message regarding uh, the urgency to evacuate uh, when notified will be consistent from all cooperating agencies. Um, uh, and to summarize, the district is moving forward, obtaining emergency permits to remove the choke points identified in the work report above the cemetery in Harmon Creek. As soon as permits are obtained, contract labor will be used to facilitate removing the choke points in which it's estimated to be a three-day project. Additionally, the district will continue communicating with the public about the hazards associated with possible landslides and debris flows and update its internal response plans for the protection of the public water facilities in the event of an emergency. The work in Harmon Creek will not alleviate the need to evacuate as directed by the county and residents must, in, must be informed and prepared for winter rains. Um, with that, I'll add that the permit process uh, is more or less a notice to agencies that we are moving forward with the project uh, uh, as an emergency uh, uh, response to the to the wildfire and to the potential for debris flows. Um, this project will is considered to, uh, removing these choke points are. Uh, where the stream would most likely leave the, the flow channel and come down Harmon Road down by the school. If we clean these, this one choke point out, most likely the, st the stream will stay in its channel. But we will not know that until you know, after the events. Um, it's a small measure to take in the watershed, but it's, it's a very important one. Um, if we can keep the, the stream in its channel, I, I think we'll be... Uh, as good as we can get in the, in the amount of time that we have uh, to address this. We feel that rain will be coming shortly. Uh, we can move in there and get this project done within a week. Uh, we can do erosion control. Uh, we will use best management practices in digging in the stream channel. There's a very small, uh, excuse me, there's a very small flow of water in this creek. So our best practices Will be we will do a small creek bypass um, with some small irrigation pipe. We will use silt netting um, to to ensure that we do not uh, send turbidity downstream, and we will uh, obtain a biologist to be on project during uh, excavation. Uh, those are uh, the key to usually to any time you work into a stream. With that, I'll kind of give it back to the board and try to answer some of your questions. If possible. Thank you, Rick. So as I understand it, then there's there's not going to be any deflection barriers constructed, or there's there's no recommendation to do that, and it's individual property owners. 
Excuse me. If we if they want something like that, is that correct? Right. If we if we remove the choke point, and that choke point is where the stream would back up and then leave the channel and go down the roadway. It was kind of a general consensus by removing that choke point, you probably wouldn't have to do any barriers downstream because uh, it would stay in its it stay in its creek bed or in the in the flow channel. You know, you you won't know. You know, there's there's no guarantees, but it was felt pretty comfortable that that would work. And they did not recommend uh, taking on a project of putting up K-Rail or barriers. And if private people wanted to do, and there felt, and there was some feeling that there's this responsibility of, of homeowners to, to do some mitigation if they felt necessary. Yeah, and the, the aspect of communication and uh, advising, it sounds like the county is going to take the lead on uh, communication regarding the need for being aware of evacuation if if the need arises? That's correct. And uh, staff attended a meeting today with the county personnel and all mapping and information um, should be out Monday, Tuesday of next week. Um, pretty much all the maps and all the evacuation information is completed, but they didn't get a, uh, a chance to get it out today. And they wanted to be available to answer questions. The county is on furlough tomorrow. So they're putting everything out starting Monday. Right. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Any uh, any other questions or comments from uh, the board? Mm -hmm. uh, Director Moran. Uh, uh, okay. I'll go first. Thank you. Uh, thanks, President Swan. Uh, Rick, I went up there today to the cemetery and yeah. uh, looked at that site. And where is the stream in relation to the IOF uh, cemetery? I didn't see a stream. You have to go past the cemetery. There's a second oh. gate. And I'd be more happy to, to take you, Rick, or James, or either one of us. It's a quick, it was about another 500 yards maybe up from uh, that second gate at the cemetery. Okay, well, I went into the cemetery. Okay, the road, keep going up the road. You keep going There's up. There's a road right to the left of that yeah. gate. And if uh -huh. you take that road up, where right when you get to the end of that road is where the actual work is meant to be done. Okay, great. All right. Um, so that, that would be great, James, if we could do that. Um, so what I noticed is, so this was the edge of the fire, uh, what I saw down at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And um, I was uh, pleased to see that plants are growing back. There's sprouts happening. Um, and, but the, the one thing that is obviously evident then when you're driving up there is the school is right below there. And, uh, you want to do as much as you can, you know, what well, you want to do as much as reasonably possible to protect that school in any kind of, uh, minor rain, big rain, any kind of rain. So I agree with, uh, the priority of Harmon Creek area. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to say is, um, I saw you had the, the big flashing sign up already. And it said, what exactly did it say? I drove by it quickly, but debris flow area, what did it say? Debris flow danger, and it gives you the numbers to put into your cell phone so you'll be notified. That's a joint project that we're working with the county, Boulder Creek Fire, and SLV Water to put uh, our changeable message sign out. Right, so that was all great. So um, thank you for answering my questions. And it was interesting going up there and uh, seeing uh, what could potentially happen. Oh, well, one other question, excuse me. Um, so if you're doing this project, is it handwork or, or is a bulldozer excavator going up there? Um, you know, trying to avoid uh, erosion? It'll be, a, it'll be an excavator. You know, we're going to uh, reach out to one or two of the local um, uh, contractors. We do have a couple local contractors that do have that kind of equipment right in downtown Boulder Creek. Um, and like we estimate uh, two to a three day job with erosion control. And, you know, basically they just go, they'll go up and sit on the embankment and use that big excavator, track layer excavator that has a, uh, it will not really disturb the embankment. They're, for a big piece of equipment, it's rather light, and it's right off of the, the access road. So they'll sit there, and they'll just dig in and pull it pull it back up. You know, there's a big fir tree that came down 
um, and we'll pull that out and, and we'll, we'll beef up that embankment. And then uh, we'll uh, erosion control and get out of there. So when you say erosion control, is that the burlaps uh, netting? Wall, 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 wall. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. And PG&E right. needs to get in there and do, because that's also the PG&E access road that they cross our property to go up where they replaced all the poles that go up to Empire Grade. And so they need to get in there and finish up their erosion control as well. And one other question. Uh, I saw about a two inch pipe on the side, black uh, plastic pipe. Is that water district's pipe or? Yes, that's know? a temporary line running over to feed those two homes right there at the end of Harmon. It comes over oh, okay. from Redwood because they're where they sit is a little high for the water to come around and get to them. And we never established those connections. So they've always been ran back there. And so that's another project that's going into FEMA. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was burned by the, the fire. And if you saw, if you saw Rick, that fire came right down to the school field, right down to the cemetery yep. and right down to the back of that last house by the main gate. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, both of you for your answers, James and Rick. Uh, Lois, you've got your blue hand yeah. up. Uh, so are you mainly um, focused on Harmon Creek because there's a possibility that you can do something to mitigate the, the debris flow where other areas, it might be impossible to do anything? Well, we're not really gonna mitigate the debris flow. We're just trying to keep it in the channel, in the actual okay. creek channel instead of letting the debris flow or the creek jump the creek and go down the roadways. You know, it, it's mapped to where it'll go right down Harmon Street into the school and then down, I think it's Oak and then down Loman, down to the operations building or down to uh, Highway 236. I mean, it's, that sounds incredibly uh, large flow and volume, but it could go any of those ways. And, and the reason we're doing this is to try to mitigate and so it doesn't go down that way. So it stays in the channel, but we were not doing anything to control the amount of debris, slow it down. It's just to remove uh, what the geologist called a, a choke point. So if getting rid of the choke point doesn't, if it's a huge debris flow, is the choke getting rid of the choke point going to help or not? I, I can't answer that, but I think it's going to help. You know, that's, that's, that's not my. Okay. No, I mean, it's, go it's going to help in a way, yeah. no matter what. Okay. It's going to help, you know, the majority of the debris stay in the channel. Right. But I mean, an excessive one that's too big for the channel. Yeah. It's obviously not, it's going to help, but it's not going to mitigate at all. It's okay. going to go down the channel. So, when I uh, went up Clear Creek Road and saw all the burnt out homes, mm -hmm. and I did see one home where they were doing something to protect their hillside. Uh, they were taking care of it themselves, but a lot of the homes were burnt out. And Clear Creek, uh, you could see all the debris and, and everything that could come down there. And I realized um, the, 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 I probably won't even say it right, um, the fan, the alluvial fan um, is so huge there by the post office that if Clear Creek uh, just went crazy, that there would probably be nothing that could be done because it's a big fan and it, and I, I guess it would all have to be dealt with by evacuation. Um, and I, I, you know, I hear people say the Creek isn't very big. And let me tell you, Lompico Creek looks like nothing usually, but when there's heavy rains, it's a raging torrent it's just crazy. You don't want to find yourself in the creek. And so I, I, I'm just concerned about other places uh, in the valley. And uh, I, I get what you're talking about uh, with Harmon Creek. 
and that's really dangerous. Um, but so is Clear Creek. And what's the other creek? I I didn't look at that one. But. Well, I I really I agree with you. But what happens is on, on Harmony Creek, we're on district property. When you where you're at up on Clear Creek, you're down on private property, and you're in the county and state right away. County will respond to those culverts along Calair Creek. State, uh, Caltrans, Department of Highways, they'll respond down on the Highway 9. They'll take over those responsibilities. And both county and state are gearing up. I mean, that's clearly in the responsibility of those two agencies. Oh. Our property on Clear Creek ends all the way, I mean, it doesn't start until the end of Clear Creek Road. Okay. Okay. So none of that debris stuff could be coming from any of our property is that's what you're well, saying i can't say that i mean we're upstream there's no doubt but yeah. we have no choke points we have no choke points and there's and it's not district property and, and it's out of the responsibility of the district um, and there's other agencies that should step up in the county right away the county should step up in the state right away the state will step up yeah, and the whole That's point perfect. of Harmon is we're clearing out the choke yeah. point, and we have no identified choke points on these other creeks, and we'll district so build up a bigger debris flow. Yeah. So that's why we're focused on Harmon. And you know, it's like at the at our meetings that we've had. This is a joint effort by all agencies, not just you know San Lorenzo Valley Water. We all have to do our part, and I'm I'm really confident that the county and state. They're really planning this out. You know, they're they're looking at Montecito, and the big difference between Montecito is that Montecito didn't have very long. They only had like two weeks to, to plan before the rains came. And their and their vegetation and so forth is different. They don't have the redwoods and, and the forest. Um, but they're they're gearing up for that type of work along Clear Creek Road. They know about it. They've been contacting homeowners. They've actually went out Clear Creek Road to house to house looked at tree to tree, um, you know, they're out uh, evaluating everything along the county and state highways. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. Uh, Bob. I think Lou had his hand up uh, first, um, Steve. I only see your hand up. Oh, okay, well, maybe he put his hand down. Um, yeah, following up on what Lois was asking about, Rick, I'm I'm still a little confused in this. So we have a number of creeks that cross our watershed property that presumably would be sources of debris and you know any kind of rain at some level, um, and certainly even a light rain if the ground saturated, there's going to be uh, runoff. Um, are we saying that there is no barriers or any other kind of obstruction in any of the other creeks other than Harmon Creek? When I say that, I, I'm referring to the work report and I don't believe the, the, the waters, they talked about all the different streams, but the uh, Harmon Creek was the stream that was um, outlined uh, that could leave the channel. Um, you know, I, I haven't been up and walked like, in, or, nor am I, you know, qualified on that. But the geologists supposedly have been up on all the watersheds uh, in the county. Um, and the difference between as you get up in our watershed, the stream channels are very steep, where, where Harmon comes right up to the road, where the Clear Creek and Foreman, those are steep, you know, canyons. Uh, it's very difficult. The stream can move around in that canyon. But it can't come out like it, like in like the bottom of Harmon. And now when it gets down, when these streams get down to Highway Nine, you know there's there's culverts there uh, that Caltrans is supposedly having a rapid response crews in the San Lorenzo Valley that are going to be at these points uh, to respond. But and we're not talking, you know, I'm not, I don't want to get into this because I'm really not. This is not my my wheelhouse. But we're not talking about saturation. We're talking about a little amount of rain in a very short time that can cause debris flows. The first rains are gonna be the worst. Uh, those are the ones that are gonna give us the, the debris flows from what I understand. Um, and that's why they're putting together this very sophisticated early warning system based on soil, moistures, and, and rainfall. They, I think they have close to a dozen rain gauges 
from uh, one end of the, of the county to the other uh, and working with many of the, of the weather agencies. It's the first rains that are gonna be the most dangerous. And so it's, that, a, it's a very small be, amount of water in 15 minutes. And, and that could be at least some rain could be within two weeks according yes. to long range forecast. Yes. So, um, I, I was interested in the statement about the K-Rail um, and becoming projectiles. How is K-Rail installed typically? Several ways, it usually pins together. You know, there's hooks and it daisy chains with a pin together. Um, you know, there's ways that you could put K-Rail in and anchor, but I, I think that they're looking at, you know, just going out and putting K-Rail on the ground like the state does for traffic barriers is probably not uh, sufficient. You'd want to cable them in. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't I would even dream that somebody would just put things on top of the ground, at least we wouldn't do it or the county wouldn't do it. But I, I, was, I was a little concerned about that because it, it makes it sound like, well, if we can't have a perfect solution, we shouldn't try to do anything with K-Rail at all. Um, I, I'm concerned about letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, I'm certainly hoping for um, a winter with no heavy, heavy rains um, that would generate a major debris flow. But um, it seems to me like the county has basically determined that they are not going to make any of their resources available for any kind of design work like that. And as we discussed at our last meeting, the district, our district with a you know, 10 to $12 million budget is really too small to have that kind of specialized resources on board. The county budget is more like 900 million. Uh, and so they have those kind of people available. Is that kind of the, the message that we should be taking away, reading between well, the lines here? You know, not on Harmon. I mean, at this meeting, there... You know, this project went from, you know, there was several discussions on the scope of this project. And the original project was probably more than, than we could get completed before the rains. It was, you know, a lot of K-Rail or a, lot, a deflection structure, you know, a lot of engineering, those type of things. What we're looking at, we're settling on is a, a go up there, restore the creek's natural channel. So you're not engineering, you're going in there and removing material that has come down from previous storms over the last 20 years, probably, and has built a sandbar up. So you're going in there and restoring the creek. So you're not really doing a lot of engineering and not changing the flow of water. And I have the county geologist, and I had several from Cal OES to say, let us know when you're doing this and we'll come out. Um, and, and so it's well, going to be, it's going to be what I envisioned, you know, four or five of us standing there with, with white hard hats on watching the excavator dig and say, that's good and restoring the channel. Yeah, uh, I, I get that. But are they looking at do, I mean, as Rick said earlier, the school's there, the cemetery's there, the, the town is there. Are they looking at doing anything in addition to that uh, over a longer period of time? Yes, this is something that can get done it sounds like within a couple of uh, weeks, perhaps, but are they looking at doing anything more to reinforce that area up there over a longer period of time? Or are they basically just saying, hey, we're done, we're not gonna take this on? They have not indicated that they're going to do any other mitigation measures. Do we know why? I couldn't speak for the county. I know they're, they're, they're pushing all their resources in on evacuation, safety, uh, and, you know, dealing with the debris flows as they come, um, you know, well, I, but I, the ge geologists aren't going to be working on evacuation. That's a different oh. sort of set of people, the technical resources to design additional protection for our critical infrastructure up there are different folks. So are they worried about getting sued? I, I can't answer that. I, mean, I can't, I can't answer uh, that. Um, there's going to be uh, Bruce McPherson's going to uh, have a town hall coming up at Highlands Park. Um, what's one thing that's came out of all this to, to get message out? I mean, those would be good uh, channels that to discuss that. He's getting ready to, uh, to facilitate a town hall meeting with all of the experts as well. 
I, I mean, if you're worried about getting sued, at least you want to get sued for doing the right thing. Um, right now, basically, what it sounds like is everybody's on their own. I, I, I find that a little bit uh, confusing because on the one hand, the county is taking a very active role in cleanup mm -hmm. from this. But on the other hand, it sounds like they're basically saying, hey, we're not going to touch any kind of protection issues. So I know we have tried to talk to people about private companies about doing uh, design work around this, and they basically all said, hey, the liability is too much. Um, I would suppose that um, private individuals could hire those same companies, but they'd probably be looking for indemnification from individual land, uh, private owners. Whereas a public agency, I think their fear is probably we might give them indemnification, but the public could still sue them. Um, so it sounds to me like this is, you know, getting more into lawyer time than, than anything else. Um, on the job for clearing out Harmon Creek, is that a prevailing wage job? Yes. Okay. And the people that we've talked to were willing to take that on. Yes, and and, uh, and the one contractor works for uh, Cal OES and, and does do emergency response. Uh, and uh, the, they do prevailing wage, these contractors do. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really disappointed in the outcome of the meeting from the point of view of protecting our critical infrastructure up there. I guess we should all hope and pray that, you know, we don't get major storms, but at the end of the day, if, if we have not taken on uh, working with the county or the county's not taken on uh, protecting that infrastructure, I, I, I don't, uh, I think there's going to be uh, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of fallout from that should any of those structures up there get uh, destroyed or damaged in, in significant ways. Um, Okay, so um, do we know when uh, Supervisor McPherson's going to have that town hall? No, I'm try we're trying to tie that down. It should be like in the second week of November. He'd like to do it before the rainy season and because there's a lot of questions on evacuation and the county's response. Well, 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 has the county indicated that if private individuals wanted to do their own structures, that there wouldn't be a lot of uh, red tape or bureaucracy around permitting and that sort of thing? That people could basically get it done right away as long as they could hire somebody? Uh, you know, again, I can't speak for the county, but what they've indicated, the type of, the type of uh, response mitigation would be more of a, a sandbag because I know that they're putting sandbag stations throughout the San Lorenzo Valley uh, for people to, to get sandbags and, and do that type of their own mitigation. As far as about building some type of, you know, engineered structure, I, I, you'd have to refer that to the county. Yeah, I, I, I think we're, we're, we're falling really short of our number one duty to our community, which is protection of life and property. And I get the evacuation. That's certainly not mutually exclusive in my view, but um, the rest of it is, um, yeah, we're, the rest of it, we're falling short. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the answers, Rick, and, and doing that. Um, uh, look forward to getting that Harmon Creek cleared out. Right. And we'll continue with this item, either on the regular agenda or special meeting agenda is to keep the board updated and, uh, get you information, let you know when this uh, has been completed. Great, thank you. you know, on this project, I, I am finding the county very supportive. And, you know, I, you know, I, I thank Supervisor McPherson. It took him to get all the players in the room, you know, and that's what I tried to explain that I can't get all those players in the room. I can get right. some well, of them. I mean, it's, it's basically but, no risk, no liability for them at this point. So that's, that's kind of why they decided to go along. Well, you know, it, it was I appreciated that we got these players in the room and, and that we're moving forward. You know, that, that's yeah, I get it. I get it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Director Ferris. Thank you, President Swan. Is there any precedent for the district doing these choke point clearing in the past? Have we done it before? 
we've done debris flow clearing from stream channels in the past, yes. Okay. My second question is um, not dealing with the, the eastern slope of the Ben Lomond Mountain where most of our property is, are other properties in the district, are, there, are they at risk for debris flow? Clay Hollow, Paso Tiempo, et cetera. To our knowledge, no, and there, I looked at the mapping today, no, but you know, the director of operations is working on a couple key facilities that are in the fire zone that did have fire come right to them with erosion control um, uh, measures. Uh, he's working with one of our uh, consulting contractors, our consulting engineers to put our facilities that are in the fire areas that are in uh, debris flow areas to protect. And our, our, one of our biggest is our Kirby water, or our fountain, or our, our, our lion water treatment plant in Boulder Creek. And okay, we've moved uh, most of the debris above it and they're installing um, some K-rail uh, to just to protect the, the back section of the treatment plant. Projectiles. Um, yeah, well, not we don't believe they will be because these would be debris flows just into the, into the plant and not stream flow, uh, just to protect the plant. Um, we are very concerned about our water treatment plant and, our, and a couple other facilities up there. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Lou. Any other uh, questions or comments from any of the directors? If not, I'll go to the uh, participants and the attendees. We have Beth Thomas calling you. Thank you, President Swan. Um, thanks for the great information, Rick. Uh, one, a couple of questions have occurred to me. You know, there's some information around in the community that I think is confusing and suggests that the water di district is responsible for more areas than you're talking about tonight. And I suspect that that is the difference between, I mean, the question I have basically is, has the county been the one who identified Harmon as the area that there were choke points that need to be de dealt with? And if that's the case, have they identified any other areas or are we not discussing other areas because they haven't identified them? Well, the work report that identified uh, that was completed by um, Cal Fire and uh, Conservation District Right. Um, the county did not do that report. You know, they sent that report out and they're using that report um, in their mapping. And they're also using the county geologist to kind of took the work report and then went off of the work report and did additional. Um, but the biggest, and, and again, Harmon was in the work report as one that something, you know, could be done to keep the, the flow in the channel. And you know, I, I know I've said that a lot, but that's important. And, and that has a chance to mitigate um, and keep that stream flow from coming down into Boulder Creek. It's not a guarantee. Right. There's, there's no guarantee on that, but the likelihood is will be reduced. So the war report did not identify, or Cal Fire did not identify any other particular areas that the water district should be doing something similar as with Harmon? Well, it, it identified a lot of areas that should, you know, that it, that, that should be looked at and made recommendations, but not like Harmon and not specifically to the water district. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. I think that's important for people to know. Right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Uh, Gail, you had your hand up. What I just thought I would add is that um, it's important to remember that the work report was done very quickly, came out very early on, and many of the things that they identified were just kind of quick ideas. And, and I think that the uh, deflection barrier um, on Harmon Creek was an example of that. And um, there's been quite a bit more work done by Jeff Nolan, who's the county geologist. Um, the other thing I would point out is that the basin that Harmon Creek um, drains is very tiny. And so the USGS modeling of the sizes of debris flows that would come down there is very small compared to ones that would come down Foreman Creek, Peavine Creek, uh, Clear Creek, 
literally a hundred times smaller. And so what that means is that the kind of mitigation they're talking about where you go out and clear out that place in um, the creek where it goes from being steep to where it flattens out and spreads out along alluvial fan, you actually have some hope of it being effective um, because the debris flows are likely to be small there. And, I, and so I think that's part of the reason that this makes sense to me um, is that it, it actually might work. On the other hand, if you tried to do this in Clear Creek or Foreman Creek or Peavine Creek, um, you know, take a bunch of uh, logs out. First, it's not on uh, district land because our land is all further upstream, whereas Harmon Creek, it's our land that the choke point is on. Um, there are choke points on Foreman, Peavine, Clear Creek, on, on most of the streams coming down there, but they're not on district land. So what they're suggesting is, I think, you know, is a sensible thing to do. It's not a super expensive thing to do. Um, and so I'm all for it. Um, and I, I think that, you know, based on the modeling that's been done, um, this is a, a good response. Thank you. Yeah. Any other uh, questions or comments from any of the attendees? I don't see any. Okay. Back to the panel. Uh, Director Fultz. I'm going to hope for a rain year that is favorable for us. If we can get through the first year, maybe the second year won't be as bad. Um, I, and I'm looking forward to that um, community meeting uh, that may be held, it sounds like, at the time of the potential first rain, according to the long range forecast. So at, at that point, we may actually have some indication of what's going to happen. Director Moran? Uh, yes, I just want to be uh, clear that I support this uh, three-day project to, you know, remove a choke point on Harmon Creek. I support that. I don't think you're asking for any board action about this, Rick. So I'm just, just providing want... information. You know, the board is obviously very concerned about this. And I, and I understand why <clears throat> it should be. Uh, and the board is given direction. They want to be kept well informed. And that is the purpose to keep you informed. And we will continue to keep you informed. Well, with that new information, I uh, support the project going ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Director Henry. Well, I, I heard Rick Moran talk about seeing sprouts of plants coming up. And we do need some rain, hopefully nothing too major, because we need plants and, and things to come back and help control the erosion that happens when it's just bare ground. We, we, we do need uh, some growth on, on these hillsides. That's all. And oh, I, I go along with whatever uh, Rick has laid out to try to take care of this problem. I'll go along with Rick Moran on that one and Rick Rogers. Any further uh, questions or comments by anybody on the board? Anybody on the staff? I, I, I just like to, to leave with saying that everybody and, and you all as board members talk to a lot of people. It's important that folks follow the instructions of the county. They're, I think, uh, I, I really believe they're on top of this evacuation and the early warning system and so forth. Don't get complacent. Tell, tell people, they say evacuate, evacuate, be prepared. Uh, this has the potential to be a very serious, dangerous to life and property event. If the county says evacuate, evacuate. Um, it's important that we follow. And it's not saturation here. The first rains could trigger this. It's a little rain in, a, in 15 minutes. Uh, it's a small amount of rain because nothing's going to soak in. It's going to run off. And 
I can't emphasize enough to follow the county's recommendations. You know, the, the sheriff will be out going door to door on evacuations. I mean, they're taking this extremely serious. Um, and uh, I can't say enough that we need to, to follow and, and recommend to folks to, to, to follow uh, the county's evacuation orders. Also, everybody in these areas can expect to be seeing a CERT team start circling the areas, going door to door mm -hmm. and getting head counts and giving information out starting, I do believe Monday, there will be a CERT team going throughout every one of these areas. Yep. Who, who would be the, uh, the key contact person from the media standpoint at the water district if they wanted to find out more about this so that they could make their um, I refer, refer them to the county, Steve, mm -hmm. on evacuations and so forth. I mean, we're a conduit and trying to pass stuff out, but if you want to find out more about like Harmon Watershed or the, this Harmon project, I would recommend they contact me. But as far as pre-planning, evacuation, and those type of things, I strongly recommend to the county. <laughs> They're the ones that are planning this and, and have all information. We speak with one voice on this. All right, thank you. Uh, Rick Moran? Yes, uh, in trying to follow up on what Rick is saying here, um, you know, this valley has become really acquainted with evacuations, but um, the thing that it reminded me of is we have to be prepared for an earthquake, uh, and it's a, you know, there's no uh, forewarning about that, so, uh, you know, at least maybe we'll have some rain to be telling us what's coming here, but, um, you know, our history with earthquakes has uh, given us some idea of how to be quick and know what to take with us during an evacuation. Thank you. Be prepared. Right. Okay, any, uh, anybody have any final parting comments or thoughts? No, with that, okay, well, the, uh, we'll call this meeting adjourned and thank you all very much for your participation. And Rick, thank you for the great information. And uh, thank you all. The staff that uh, put it together. Yep. All right. Thank you. Good evening.